All right, welcome back to what's your attachment style and why does it matter? And in this video, we are going to discuss the avoidant dismissive attachment style. This is basically, you know, the uh, runner in a runner chaser dynamic. This is the commitment phobe, the player, the loner, the rolling stone. <laughs> um, this person's attitude is generally guarded. Um, they are counter dependent, okay, as opposed to codependent, right? And they tend to have a more of a positive view of themselves and a negative view of others. So it's kind of the flip of, of the last video that I covered uh, with the anxious, preoccupied attachment style, right? Because they have a low opinion of themselves, a high opinion of others. But when we're talking about this, this runner, they tend to think of themselves a bit more highly than other people. So where does this come from? In their childhood, usually this person had parents that stressed them out. Uh, this parent, at least one of the parents or caregivers perhaps punished, disciplined, corrected more than they nurtured, right? This is kind of like having uh, the drill sergeant for a, a father, <laughs> okay? Um, this person might have been slightly, you know, the parent might have been slightly abusive, um, but regardless of how it came across, in some way the child ended up feeling insecure in the presence of that parent. And yeah, that parent might have been very critical, judgmental, rigid in some respects. So then what happens is the child ends up preferring independence over intimacy. And intimacy is seen as problematic. And so it's likely that this child had parents who were detached, disengaged, and emotionally unavailable, negligent in some respect. So what happens in this environment or with this upbring upbringing is that the child learns to avoid or ignore the parent. And then as an adult, what happens is they likely avoid emotional connection, closeness, and commitment. And that's because the child learned to handle intimacy problems with solitude, stoicism, and taking pride in their ability to be self-sufficient. So what happens is that this upbringing impacts the child's emotional availability. It limits their emotional range and it diminishes their self-esteem, right? They might have low self-esteem, but I think that at the end of the day, they still often will view themselves a little bit more. They trust themselves more than others. That's why they're running from other people, right? So with this childhood, uh, ignoring emotional needs within themselves and in others becomes normalized. And in that environment, they learn to stuff their feelings. Sometimes this results in emotional outbursts, but they can become so emotionally distant that they reject relationships. In their adulthood, these people tend to be hyper independent, strongly self-reliant. They can downplay the importance of relationships in their life. And when they are in relationships, they tend to under communicate. They can use a few words or they have a lack of emotional depth and range. What they will do is tend to keep things on the factual, superficial level, very surfacey conversations, keep it light and fluffy, talk about the future, talk about things and other people rather than write this inward stuff myself. What's going on in here? How do I feel? What do I think? What do I want? What do I need? Right. That would be too personal, right? We're going to keep it all externalized with the conversation and keep it superficial and fluffy. And so in relationships also, they tend to be suspicious because like I said before, they don't, they don't really trust other people. And so because of the suspicion and the lack of trust of others, they will tend to put distance between themselves and their partner. And this makes it very difficult for them to get close to others, for others to get close to them. They can put up walls so that others don't get close to them. By the way, I have put out a video a while back on, uh, how to spot emotionally unavailable people. And I will put the video for that at the end of this one if you are interested in watching. But yeah, back to the topic at hand. So when you're dealing with someone who has this avoidant dismissive attachment style, a lot of times really their attachment system is completely shut off. 
it's shut down and they're not really aware of their thoughts and feelings because of that and they will have a tendency to just kind of let things go when in reality they are bothered they are hurt they'll just let it go because really they might have a fear of discussing things you know where on one hand like with the the anxious attachment style would maybe be afraid of bringing things up because they're afraid of putting distance between them and another person running them off scaring them off whatever overwhelming them well this kind of person they they're afraid of discussing feelings because they don't want things to get too close they don't want things to get too personal and if they do feel threatened then they're typically going to withdraw from the situation they could even try to prevent conflicts by leaving or avoiding in some way during a conflict and just be completely cut off from emotions during a conflict. This type of person often confuses standing up for oneself as rudeness. They also have a tendency to confuse a partner search for fair intimacy as crossing their boundaries. A lot of times these type of people tend to think or believe things like, I don't need anyone. I can take care of myself. I don't trust you. I'm better off on my own. Or like I heard one person with this once say to me, you don't need anyone. All you need is yourself, right? There's a devaluation of the importance of relationships in their life. So after a breakup, what tends to happen with someone like this is they will rationalize that the relationship was never going to work in the first place and they'll pretend to feel nothing. And this is how they avoid uncomfortable feelings. They just refocus on their own independence, which is pretty easy because they associate intimacy with a loss of independence. And this reaction that they have during breakups has been normalized during their childhood where the parents were not really fully present and they learned to avoid intimacy and they learned to suppress emotions to cope with these kind of situations. Subconsciously, the pain is there, but they numb it out until the feelings come up later and they eventually do come up later but by then it might be too late. So some advice and goals, you know, if you have this type of attachment style is yes, work on your self-esteem and building and maintaining trust with others. Try to become more aware of your attachment style. Consider interdependence versus counterdependence. Try to realize that role in your life that counterdependence has played and how it could be replaced with a better dynamic, a healthier dynamic of interdependence, right? Where you can be dependent upon and you can also depend on others. It's not a one way thing. It's two way, right? It's reciprocal, mutual. Also acknowledge the impact that counterdependency has had on others. It's kind of running from people uh, this runner chaser dynamic like how has this impacted you how has this impacted others and try to face your fear of losing yourself to others or a fear of committing to people who are not committed to you can you reconcile the idea that intimacy does not have to equal a loss of independence or a loss of power that actually it could be more empowering. It could be more supporting. Just a thought. Realize also your thoughts and feelings, your needs and your wants. Truly, like what would you want and need and feel and think if you were not so preoccupied with not being suffocated, <laughs> you know, uh, not being locked down, <laughs> okay? And develop more of a strategy for managing your emotions, your insecurities, okay? That we all have them, right? But maybe come up with a better strategy than running <laughs> and avoiding, okay? And deflecting and distracting. Um, and, and also come up with a better way of communicating those emotions clearly. 
And when you are in relationships with other people, try to practice more eye to eye contact when you're talking to other people. Um, using those kinder, gentler eyes, you know, empathic eyes, uh, displaying, I see you, I hear you, I feel you, I'm present with you, okay? Um, by the way, I talk more about this type of, um, uh, like an attachment gaze. I talk about this more in my two-part video series on sacred sexuality. So if you are interested, I will pu put the link for that at the end of this video. But that is all I have for now. And um, yeah, you know, I, comment down below if you've dealt with this. I don't know. I don't know how you... This is a rough one, okay? And I'm going to say in the next video, it's another variation of this avoidant attachment style with a bit of a twist to it, okay? But it's the same type of uh, runner dynamic. And we're going to talk about it in the next video. So you want to make sure that you see that video and you haven't already activated the bell for notifications, please do so. Till next time, be blessed.